This video is made possible by Power Up, which is an amazing company that makes motors that you clip onto your paper airplanes and it turns your regular paper airplanes into smartphone controlled flying machines. They are amazing. And I have an awesome promotion for you guys today. If you head over to PowerUpToys.com and you use the promo code FF20, you can get 20% off your entire order. Now that only lasts for 48 hours after this video launches. So hurry over there if you're wanting to make a purchase. This is the time to do it. Now I have an awesome video for you guys today. You're familiar with my series, How to Design Your Own Paper Airplane, and this is the fourth installment in that series. Today I'm teaching you how to lock your paper airplanes in three-dimensional forms. You can see, even though I'm pulling on this, it doesn't come apart, it maintains that three-dimensional form, and that can be really important. It will add the advantage of one, making your plane very aerodynamic, and two, it means that you can set your wing angle and when you throw the plane and let go of it, it's going to hold that wing angle uh, rather than flopping open like some planes would. And even this one, which you can pull open a little bit, uh, when you throw it, it's going to hold just like this. You know, forcibly you can open it, but naturally it's going to hold its shape. And that is the key advantage of these three-dimensional locks. Now this is Michael LaFosse's lock, which he uses in many of his designs. This one is Swallow, which is a plane of my design, but the locking design is the one used in Tokoa Toda's, Tokoa Toda's Sky King, which is a world record paper airplane. So this is serious stuff. And then this one here is John Collins' nose lock, which is, as you can see, extremely aerodynamic. And he uses that in many of his designs. And I'm gonna teach you how to fold each of these and then a bonus one as well. Now, I do think this video may go a bit long, so don't be intimidated by that. Uh, I'm going to leave timestamps under each of these to, uh, so you can jump ahead to exactly the point you wanna watch if you don't wanna watch all of it. And then at the end, like I said, there's going to be a bonus one and there's a timestamp for that as well. Now let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to teach you how to set up and fold that LaFosse lock. Now the LaFosse lock is a pretty flexible lock. And what I mean by that is that it can be implemented in a variety of paper airplanes. The setup is really easy and it doesn't dictate the entirety of the plane the way some locks do. So all you have to do in order to set up for LaFosse lock is fold some portion of your plane down and then fold back up again. And I'll show you exactly what that is going to do. Let me make sure everything's squared up on this side. What that does is it creates this seam in the page, this edge that we're going to utilize ultimately to make that lock. So let me go ahead and put this over and I'm going to fold this top edge to center. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And what we're doing now is we are setting outer edges and locking down this top layer. So whereas if we have it like this, this top layer can be pulled up. Once we fold those behind, that layer is locked down. And now we're going to make this layer into the LaFosse lock. And the way we do that is you can see the depth of our pocket, it kind of goes to right about there. I wanna fold a crease that goes from this corner, right where the pocket meets the edge of this wing, down to the back edge of the pocket. And I'm just gonna kind of pull it open in order to do that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I know this can be a little bit tricky, but there we're set up now, ready to perform our LaFosse lock. And what we wanna do is we want to fold this plane in half on that existing crease. Let me get it kind of prepared. It was facing the wrong way. So now when I begin closing this, you can see how this kind of elbow or this joint moves backwards as you close the paper. And that's exactly what you want. You want that to end up inside the plane facing backwards. And now if I fold my wings right through this intersection, that's what's going to hold it all together. So let me open that up and show you exactly what that looks like. And I'm just folding quickly here. This won't be extremely precise. And you can see I missed that pocket or the elbow slightly, 
But the general idea, you can see exactly what's going on. This is holding it all together. So that's how you do a LaFosse lock. Now, uh, this is not even a plane that would fly, I'm sure, but you get the idea now of the folding sequence used to create that lock. You can implement it in a variety of planes. And if you wanna see how I implement it in Invictus, I'll leave a card in the top right corner right now so you can follow that tutorial. All right. Takuo Toda's nose lock is also a very easy one, and this is the least restrictive of all the locks I'll show you today. Uh, you can see all you need for this is a plane with a pointed nose. Now, it is ideal that you don't have really thick layers up here, so not too many layers at the front, because that can make folding the lock quite difficult. It could even tear on you. But that's really all you need, and even better if your nose is a right angle, because that will make it look very nice and clean at the end, though that's not necessary. And all you have to do now is fold this point down, and that's setting us up to designate what portion of the plane is going to become the lock. So now I'll unfold that, fold the plane in half, and stand the portion we just folded, and then I will squash fold that like so. And once I've squash folded, I want to fold this point down to this point, like so. And we're actually positioned in such a way that this could become our lock. We would fold this behind, and you can see that's kind of locking the nose together. But there's an extra step that makes it even cleaner, a little bit more aerodynamic. If we open that up, you can see we kind of have these pockets on either side and you can use a pen or something, I'm just going to use my fingernails, to open up each of those pockets and flatten it like so. And this is going to reduce the number of layers there, reduce the likelihood of tearing, and make it more aerodynamic. And we'll swing this other side behind. So now we have that lock on the front. And if you want it to lock in the back as well, fold your wing crease from just above this lock to down, uh, all the way sloping down to this back corner of your plane. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And there you go, you can see it's locking both in the front and the back, and it's beautifully aerodynamic. Now, if you wanna see how I implement it in Swallow, a plane of my own design, you'll have to wait until my book is finally released. I've been working so hard to get that done. Hopefully, hopefully I'll finish it this summer and launch that for you guys. Now on to John Collins' lock. To set up for the Collins nose lock, we're just going to start by folding the top edge down slightly. After doing that, we'll flip the paper over and fold each side into center. Now the Collins lock is very aerodynamic, a beautiful lock, but it is a bit more restrictive in terms of the design of the plane. There's not as much variety in what you can do outside of creating the lock because the process kind of dictates the plane to a greater degree. Now you can see we're set up, we just have these what was that top edge folded down, folded to the center. These bands are going to be crucial to the lock. As you can see, we're going to close this like so, and you'll see there's this portion inside the plane right now. We actually want that to be released and on the outside of the plane. And this band here is actually going to be the thing that forms the lock. You're going to kind of pull either side out and down like so, and you're going to try to land that right on that gap between your two wings. And then once you have that, you're going to kind of flatten it down like so. And that is forming the lock. Now, uh, it's also important to tidy up these layers so that the lock doesn't just come unfolded. So what we want to do is we'll open this up fold this to center, and this is kind of going to end up holding the lock together. And then I'll fold this edge to center. And I will close it all up like that. And I'll flip it over 
do the same thing on this side, fold this to the, I was saying fold to center, fold to that diagonal crease, fold this edge to the diagonal crease. And then we'll close that all up like so. And now we have this really nice and tidy nose lock. It's already not wanting to come open up there. And we just have to fold from just above the nose lock down to this back edge to again lock that back edge of our plane as well. And this isn't meant to be a working design. This is just showing you an example of how to implement and create a John Collins nose lock. And there you go. Now I promised you a bonus one, so that is up next. So let's say you're not into this complex origami. You're not about these difficult folding sequences and you have this simple paper airplane and it's just flopping open. It's not flying that well. How do you lock it together? What do you do? Well, you could tape it, obviously. But far cooler than that would be to use a power up 3.0. Just slide this on over the nose and your plane is locked in that three dimensional shape. And it's not only is it going to fly better because of that, it's got a motor on it and it's a remote control paper airplane. So obviously shameless sponsor plug here, but, but I highly, highly believe in these products. I love power ups motors. I own before I was even sponsored by them, I owned three different versions, the FPV, the 3.0, the Dart. Actually, I had the 2.0 also. So I had all of all of their paper airplane motors. So uh, obviously, I love these products. Highly recommend that you take advantage of this 20% off sale by heading over to PowerUpToys.com. Using that promo code FF20, you'll get 20% off your entire order. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you next time.